All right, where to now, St. Peter? The next sim on the list. Nerevarin. Nerevarin. Okay. Make it so. Wow, some really tall uh, peaks over there. This is already a plus because I didn't uh, res underwater. But what am I standing on? I'm Jesus. No, I'm not Jesus. Never mind. Wow, this is cool. I'm liking this. What is all this stuff in the sky? Looks like giant trees. Overshadowing everything. Clearly this is another sin that's going to take a considerable amount of time to res. One of the reasons I'm liking this one is because unlike the other sims I've been to, it actually does a good job of um, visually representing the scale of a sim. You can see how many houses there are and how small they are, and yet they're only taking up a small percentage of the entire sim. A lot of the times builders will build houses and stuff on their property that's totally disproportionate and so it gives an illusion of uh, the sim being smaller than it actually is when they're usually pretty large. Everything's still loading, textures, geometry. That's a cool tree. This is a really interesting little plot here with this kind of like gear motif. Neon water. Oh, that's cool. This one has a little, uh, mini map thing going on in here and, uh, I, th I believe we're on this sim right here that's cool Maybe they can monitor uh, what's going on <laughs> it's not meta or anything Obviously a chair built for uh, an avatar that looks considerably different than mine. So that seems to be kind of the headquarters. There's a lot of buildings on this end. That's a mini candy land. <coughs> this happened, Blue Jays. That one's a little bit bright for my uh, tastes. Looks like a dragon. This is probably somehow associated with that other sim I was at recently that had the uh, dragon theme. If there's actually an entrance to this building. Floating trees. God, those are huge trees. Kind of a world tree sort of idea. That's awesome. Shades the entire sim. God, each one of those trees is practically a eighth of a sim. It's pretty awesome. It's the kind of thing you just can't do in Second Life. 
Which is why so many builders are attracted to in-worlds. Floating office. Radio looks familiar. Little dojo here. It's surprising how many times I've seen this. Uh, there's like a building and then there's absolutely nothing inside. Just seems kind of bizarre. Like <laughs> I can't imagine why you'd want an empty building. I mean, there isn't even a chair inside. Same, same with those. I mean, I guess effectively you can create sort of like the illusion of a uh, a village with a bunch of empty buildings, but when it comes to actually exploring, it's not a very uh, pleasing experience. Looks like a barn. Huh, these chickens? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> All the stuff like that. Let's see if I can actually find a house that has something inside of it other than just four walls. A little fireplace. Still not really anything to speak of inside of there. I mean, it kind of makes sense. You've got an avatar, and uh, you're pretty much the exclusive user of the sim. I mean, do you really need an entire village? Not really. You're probably going to mainly hang out in just one building, so the other buildings are just basically there for aesthetic appeal. I don't know what that is. And uh yeah this sim still looks looks like a work in progress. I mean you see a big board out in the middle of the the air like that, it means the builder's probably still building a few things, so I mean it's not really ever a fair evaluation to take a sim and uh, treated as if it was a final product. Some nice trees on this property. These uh, uh, terraformed peaks here. Um, it's it's a cool effect, but it really doesn't look very good. I mean, it, it looks it looks like a more of an accidental type look than than an intentional thing. This is probably a, an elevator that connects the uh, main house to the uh, trees up in the clouds. There might even be a, a building up here, or not. Um, those are typically referred to as like space elevators in virtual worlds. It looks like I pretty much saw everything there is to see. Uh, <laughs> a giant teddy bear. Intriguing. Oh, these are all tiny uh, attachment points. They don't really work for uh, full-size avatars, as you can see my avatar basically just gets smashed up and imploded into a a bunch of uh, limbs all smashed together. That's because the tinies are... there's no way to actually get rid of the base avatar so you have to s contort it up into a little nearly invisible blob, in which case the constructs that go on top of the uh, avatar can basically conceal the uh, body and skeleton. It's kind of creepy really if you think about it. But, uh, there's really no other way. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, so, not really 
much going on inside this giant dome. I mean, you would kind of think something like that would have a little bit more interesting internals, but no, not really. The ultimate cliche is hiding things behind waterfalls, so I always, whenever I see a waterfall, I always try to look behind it and see if there's any kind of building back there. Looks like, yeah, there's kind of just sort of a little opening there that goes to the waterfall. Yeah, so that is uh, Nerevarin. Kind of hard to pronounce. Butterpaw. Braven. I guess one of those bunny mini avatars. I know, a big dragon, never mind. <laughs> Cool. Another sim under the belt. Those trees really do uh, tie the whole thing together. Pretty cool overall. <laughs>